Well, indeed, thank you for staying with us here on KTN Business today. It is still a, indeed a pleasure being here now. Let's get on to the second part of the show. But before that, we want to take a quick sampling of what exactly the online conversation is. And well, with the online, with the ongoing conversation around crackdown of consumers, our Twitter poll question for the day is, well, what is your experience around the exact, well, have you ever fallen prey into buying counterfeit goods and what exactly was your experience? Again, have you ever fallen prey to buying counterfeit goods and what exactly was your experience? Reach out to us at KTN News at Peter Okaba. We will sample that conversation as the conversation does go on. And well, let's first bring you the conversation that I had just indicated earlier before with the ongoing crackdown on consumer goods, it is not lost on many, that there are a lot of counterfeit motor vehicle parts on sale that compromise safety and cost consumers and the economy millions. While mechanics have been indeed on the spot, as have been shops, savvy vehicle owners and car companies insist on working with just approved or certified mechanics or service centers. So serious is this situation that insurance companies will only work with approved repair shops for repairs though this is causing disquiet in the industry. Julia Wino has more on that story. So basically, Peter, today we visited one of the mechanic stations here at Mwiki Town, where we are trying to understand the issue on counterfeit uh, uh, spare parts, where customers come and most of the time they say they're not satisfied with the products they get later in, that the, uh, the spare parts they get from majority of mechanics end up being counterfeit and spoil their vehicles completely. But today we are joined with Julius Mwangi, who's going to give us a deep insight of how this happens and probably one of the adoptions or methods that needs to be taken by mechanics to ensure they also don't get counterfeit uh, products or spare parts from other companies. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Uh, Julius Mwangi from Isusu East Africa. What you have done to stop this aspect of counterfeit non-genuine parts in, uh, in the market is to open up Isusu Machinane, a container that we fabricate in Isusu East Africa. We train the mechanics, we show them how to, uh, to, to check genuine and non-genuine parts and to be able to service the customer's vehicle properly mm -hmm. so that they cannot be accused again or they can have a problem of using non-genuine parts. All right. So if, you, if you'd also like to tell us this situation where we, th we see uh, most uh, car owners prefer to seek, to seek help from insurance companies that are operating with mechanics, what do you have to say about this? The, the insurance, what has happened, we have engaged the insurance so that they can also understand that going to authorized service centers for all repairs whenever somebody has an accident is the best. And they have started to understand and to appreciate that the, the, the owners of the, the cars are happier, the cars get back to the normal, and it is cheaper than using non-genuine uh, parts. So we are in constant uh, discussion with insurance uh, uh, operators and they are happy to understand. Because the, the, the thing that has been the difference is awareness. People have not been aware. When you use genuine parts, it's cheaper for you, it's safer, and it's better for all of us. Mm -hmm. yes. But let me say about the mechanics who, pr who probably do not want to adapt to the new systems that are brought about to deal with counterfeit uh, spare parts. What are some of the measures that you suggest should be taken to deal with such kind of mechanics? And probably to also warn the customers when they are faced with such, what are some of the things they need to look out for before they fall victims? One of the most important things is awareness. People need to be aware, the, the, the customers, the owners, and also the mechanics need to be aware that it is cheaper, it is safer to operate using genuine parts. That awareness has been the, uh, the differentiator, that you want people inside a vehicle to reach the destination they wanted to reach without any incidents because we have used the genuine parts. So once, as a country, we are aware about this, and also through enforcement, we continuously monitor areas of repair of vehicles that they are using genuine parts. That will be able to solve. Like for us, from Isusu East Africa, we, we frequently monitor all the authorized areas. We do frequent audit to check whether they are following our procedures and using our parts. And you can be able to guarantee that whenever you go to authorized Isusu centers, you'll be able to get authorized uh, parts and genuine trained mechanics. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Peter, as you've heard, this is just one sentiment from one of the people who has specialized in this area. And what he's basically trying to say is that more Kenyans need to, to be educated on how to identify genuine parts and non-genuine parts. Back to you in studio, Peter. Well, uh, indeed, uh, many thanks, my colleague there, Julie Owino, on that. Well, of course, we'll be coming to that conversation towards the end of our show with the sampling of, well, the conversation that is going on on Twitter. But first, a link chain of supermarkets, Nakumat Holdings, has embarked on a business recovery program with a focus on seven key branches. The recovery program dubbed Nakumat Bounce Back is supported by scores of local and international suppliers keen on getting the firm back on track. Part of the recovery strategy saw the firm announce optimum restocking of seven key branches in Nairobi, Nakuru, and Kisumu, which will act as its growth foundation. Speaking at Nakumat Prestige, Nakumat Holdings CEO Atul Shah noted that the firm is collaborating with the court appointed administrator Peter Kahe to recalibrate the business operations. Already the seven key branches, Nakumat Mega, Nakumat Prestige, UK, Lovington, Embakasi, and Mega City in Kisumu, and Nakumat Nakuru have opened their doors with a variety of sales offers that are currently ongoing. Of course, that Kenyan icon there struggling to find footing and asking for your support. Now, the recent road blockade by a section of Trukana residents over the oil transportation scheme is being, uh, is being blamed on a section of local leaders. West Pokot Governor Professor John Lonyangapu is now warning such leaders against incitement and saying it will be proven to be counterproductive. The locals last week paralyzed operations of crude oil from Lokicha area to Mombasa, complaining over insecurity and the lack of jobs. Alvis Koske with that story. <laughs> Mafuta haya hataisaidia mtu yeyote ikibaki kule chini kwa sababu sisi ambao tuatakikana ku benefit kwa hiyo resource hatutaweza kutatua shida zetu na kukuja pamoja. It was a historic moment as President Uhuru Kenyatta declared a great day for Kenya as he flagged off the first consignment of crude oil destined for export from Kenya. <laughs> A month later, Turkana County residents stopped five trucks from ferrying crude oil to Mombasa over rising insecurity along the border with Baringo. Other residents demanded that they should be employed as road marshals to ensure that livestock does not interfere with the smooth passage of oil. Mafuta ni usalama, sio by force, ni usalama diyo imefanya zizi tusimamisha hii magari ya leo. Magari ambayo imesafirisha mafuta paga ya Mombasa, saa hizi tumesabu inaexidi hata miyamoja, imepita tu, lakini watu wetu kapedo wanaumia, lokori wanaumia. Hile magari salasini walikuwa nasema watapatia wanainchi, haiwanekani. Road marshal tulisikisana kuanzia kainuku, mbaka penya mafuta inatolua ndani ya hizi hizi. The locals last week paralyzed transport of the crude oil from Lokichar area to Mombasa, complaining over insecurity, lack of jobs, and need for tenders. West Pokot Governor Professor John Rob Lonyangapuo has now warned leaders against incitement, saying it is likely to jeopardize crucial activities and benefits that communities could achieve. Nataka niombe viongosi. Ulimi ni kiumbe kidogo, matatizo yake ni makubwa. Kwanza kuchochea raya, ati hii mafuta ni yetu, hii siyo yetu, tuchunge ulimi yetu. The governor said he has been working closely with his Turkana counterpart Josephat Nanok and wondered why few individuals are bent on derailing the oil transportation while inciting their citizens. Wanzangu watu ya Turkana kwanza, ataka ni shukuru mweshimu wa governor Nanok, sijasikia, lakini kuna viongozi hapa wachache 
please let's control na tusiingize hadi pengine police wanachunga mafuta taa ikienda kuliko kujunga watu tumeleta amani ya kutosha saa hii kati ya opoko na turkana kwa turkana saa hii wanaishi na opoko However, Turkana MPs led by Turkana South Member of Parliament James Lomenen and his Turkana East counterpart Mohamed Lokiro have maintained that banditry still remains a threat in the area and want the state to assure residents of their security. Elvis Kosgei, KT News. Of course, I can tell you first that the effect of razor wire and barbed wire on top of fences is nothing to play about. But of course, real issues there that should get sorted out. Now, moving on, the policy strategy reduction of barriers and improvement of infrastructure by the government is working magic in the revival of the tourism sector, according to hoteliers. Now, Travelers Beach Hotel manager Wafula Wasa has said that the opening of the African skies and the African Union single air trade made the continent the best performer in the local market after Europe. The sector hit a slump during the recent clashes in 2007 and during the Jubilee's first term when there was a terrorist strike. of this uh, facility has endeavored to try and modernize everything possible within the re resources available to try and modernize the facilities. We have uh, done a lot of uh, renovation and expansion works uh, to try and, uh, and uh, uh, meet what the clients deem as uh, very modern and very, very responsive to their needs. It was reported that Kenya, the tourism industry, uh, got over from 3.5 percent, from 3.5 million uh, uh, local bed nights. Uh, the, 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 that increased by 15 percent to around 4.0 percent, 4.0 million uh, bed nights that uh, we had in the year 2017. So we are hoping that with the increased uh, marketing with the increased uh, spend from the government uh, towards sensitizing the local, uh, the local uh, market, we are likely to increase to, to, to see a better return in the year 2018 as compared to 2017. Well, of course, those improvements for that sector that are currently ongoing. Now, to a triple top question and the results just before we go, we had asked, have you ever fallen prey to buying counterfeit goods? If yes, what was your experience? The hashtag KTN Business. Well, the results are indeed in. Well, yes, 75%, no, 7%, and 18% of you saying, I am not sure. And to just sample the three replies that we have, well, Isaac Moirori, that is at Itzak Zak, says, I felt sorry for myself and vowed never to buy from some shops in a particular area in this city. And Engineer Stephen, Engineer Stephen 3 says, I bought an electronic gadget. When I connected it to power, it died instantly. I felt like crying, and maybe he should have. Well, Amakanji Thomas says, well, you mean that we have original goods in Kenya? No, they are all counterfeit. Well, that is just a sampling of what the conversation has been so far. Of course, that conversation continues. But KTN Business Today comes to an end right here. We will be back again tomorrow with more at the same time from the world of business. Up next in just a few minutes, well, New York, uh, New York KTN, the news in Swahili from the Swahili desk. We'll, of course, be back again later in the evening with KTN Prime Business. My name is Peter Okaba. It has been a pleasure to continue to enjoy the rest of your viewing.